In this corner, the all-new Marvel Legends blister card, Ben Riley, And in this corner, Ben Riley as the demoniacal chasm. Which Ben is the better bang for your buck? Stick around for an all-new Versus and some Spider-Man head swaps. Welcome to Five Points of Articulation, where I review action figures and then articulate five points to help you decide if you want to add that figure to your collection. The five points I discuss are packaging, presentation, posability, playability, and price. I'm Jason, and if you enjoy my content, please like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube rigmarole. Starting off with the packaging, and these are the new Fangle Blister cards we saw in the Electro vs. Raphael video. I do feel like they're using the retro card as a base. Logo up top with webs emanating off of it. Logo up top with webs emanating off of it. Mostly purple and blue background. Mostly purple and blue background. Orangey framed irregular quadrilateral on the side with character art. Orangey framed irregular quadrilateral on the side with character art. And just to be clear, I'm not complaining. I've been saying for years that they shouldn't use the retro card for figures that weren't in retro lines and that they should make something new, and they did. Flipping around back, we get an extra large picture of the figure, and also a bio. Given that Marvel Legends has been drifting away from those, that's very much appreciated, especially in a case like this. As someone who doesn't read a lot of modern comics, I hadn't heard of Chasm until the figure was announced. For people who are unfamiliar, even a small blurb like this can be really helpful. As for why they rolled out blister cards instead of just making this an inbox build-a-wave, I'll talk about that later. But for now, and for packaging, this round is a draw. Moving on to presentation and both figures stand at six and a quarter inches. First things first, and both of these figures are near complete reuse. The heads are new, and honestly these web shooters might be, I'm not 100%. These ways are not the same as the ones that came with Retro Card Ben. But otherwise, Ben is the Spider-Man Renew Your Vows body, and Chasm is Sunfire. I can see a lot of people being frustrated that they didn't use Renew Your Vows for both, but from my understanding they have limited molds of each body and can't always do multiples in the same wave. I will say if you're not going to use Renew Your Vows, Sunfire is the right way to go, mainly because Sunfire is the body that they built Renew Your Vows off of. Just look at the neck and shoulders, the bicep swivel and sculpt of the arms, the legs, and especially the interior oblique muscles. So even though they're not the same body, they do still look like they could be two versions of the same person. I've always been a sucker for the classic Ben Riley design, but honestly this is pretty cool. I'm not sure if I like the eyes being that big. I feel like at some point Spider-Man's mask is just going to be one giant eyeball like the orb, but the pearlized paint is really nice, and it's wonderful to see all these beautifully painted web lines. They're nice and crisp, and Hasbro continued them underneath the articulation, including the butterfly joint. That said, I'm not crazy about this spider on his back. To me, it looks more like a tick, but I do like the new front logo, and I think it's interesting that they have it off to the side. Just something a bit different. As I said during packaging, I never heard of Chasm until they announced the action figure. Immediately, I was taken by this very bold color scheme. You know, because I love turquoise, but that combination of turquoise and lavender really feels like the 90s. Similar to Ben, he has a new head. I like how the mask is dripping into the logo, Hasbro painted underneath there as well, and under that logo. I can definitely see some collectors being bothered that this wasn't pinless, but that doesn't bother me as much as it does some other people. In the comic, Chasm is depicted as having a kind of turquoise energy crackle coming off of his body, and frankly, I'm more let down that they didn't do that. Something like this carnage effect would have gone a long way to capture that in action figure form. I mean, there's a hole in his back, so they could have plugged something in there. The carnage tendrils fit in there just fine. Cast those in turquoise and I would have been happy. Despite the missed opportunity, opportunities, I do still like this color scheme, and I feel like he's really going to pop on your shelf. Even so, between the pinless joints, the more intricate paint scheme, and Chasm's general missed opportunities for presentation, this round goes to Ben. Moving on to posability, and that's probably the biggest deviation between these two. From the top and Ben's heads in a dumbbell joint, Chasm is on a ball joint and a disc hinge. They can look up this high, which is about even, and this far down with Chasm having the edge. That's because Ben has a notch in the back of his neck, but not the front. Moving on down to both have swivel hinge and shoulders with Ben being able to reach up higher. Both figures have butterfly joints, but Chasm has a slightly deeper bend. Traveling down the arm and both Bens have bicep swivel. They also have double jointed elbows with Ben having a slightly deeper bend. As I said before, he's also pinless. And then at the end of the arms, both figures have swivel hinge wrists. Moving to the middle and Ben has a diaphragm joint and a reverse ab crunch. Chasm, by contrast, has an ab crunch and a waist swivel. As such, they can bend back this far with Ben doing much better, and they can hunch forward this far with Ben 
again doing better. Chasm, of course, can twist, but Ben can twist and tilt. Below the waist and both figures have ball jointed hips, but Ben's are drop down. He can kick this high and split this wide. Chasm surprisingly kicks just as high and splits just as wide. That said, both figures have thigh cut, double jointed knees with equivalent bends, boot cut, and Marvel Legends ankles that can hinge and pivot, but Ben benefits from toe articulation. Although I do think the range in the Sunfire body is good, it should go without saying that for pose ability, this round also goes to Ben. Moving on to playability, and Ben comes with a single whip hand and a single wall crawling hand. I have said before that if you're going to give Spider-Man only two sets of hands, then mixing it up is probably the best way to go. But I've also said that Spider-Man needs to come with a minimum of six. Fortunately, if you have Renew Your Vow Spider-Man, you can use those. On that subject, the only hands a chasm has are these fists. If, however, you have the bombastic Bagman, you can use his. All he does come with are these energy effects to go around his wrist. And once again, I have to say what a missed opportunity this figure is. But playability is more than just accessories, it's also about how well your figures play with others. Starting with the only other figure in the wave I've looked at so far, and here we have Electra's Daredevil. As for some villains, and there'd be no Ben Riley if it wasn't for the Jackal and his warped legs. Keeping it simple with the classic Sinister Six, and here we have Mysterio. Dr. Octopus nudging Chasm in the throat. Adrian Toomes, also known as the Vulture. Craven the Hunter, who is missing his belt and loincloth. Flint Marco, the Sandman. And Electro, whose crazy mask can't even fit in frame. For just a few other big bads, and here we have the retro card Green Goblin, Venom, Venom, Carnage, and Carnage. For a couple of other Ben's Riley, and here's the original Hasbro Marvel Legend version, and here's Scarlet Spider. And then for a couple of other non-Peter Parker Spider-Men, and here's the game reverse Miles Morales, and Miguel O'Hara, Spider-Man 2099, who definitely could use a Renew Your Vows body upgrade. For a couple of Peter Parkers, and more importantly, for a roll to scale comparison, here we have Pizza Spidey and the Spectacular Spider-Man, and as always, here they are with Stealth Iron Man. Wait, no shocker? But everyone loves when you do the shocker clip. Of course, one of the things I'm sure you're the most excited to see are head swaps. Not surprisingly, but Chasm's gonna be sitting this part out. Starting with Ben, and here's the original Hobgoblin Way version. The reds on this match really well, and honestly, I kind of like this head better. Leastways, it looks a lot closer to the comic artwork. Other way around, and this head seems way too big for this body, but again, the reds are a pretty decent match. Next, and here we have the retro card version, which is also on this body mold. In general, this is one of my favorite Spider-Man heads. The red's a little bit darker, and the head's a little bit less glossy, but at regular light, I don't think you'll notice. Other way around, and since the torso is the same, this fits pretty well. For those who prefer a bigger eyed Ben Riley, this is kind of cool. Moving over to Peter Parker, and here we have the original release, Pizza a Spidey. This is the same head sculpt as the first Ben we looked at, but since I forgot to show you last time, here's a profile. That said, one of the things that makes Pizza Spidey really special is this alternate head. The jaw really breaks it up, so any differences in the reds or blacks kind of disappear. Conversely, I still don't think that this head's a great fit for this body, but I do like it better here than on Ben Riley. If you're curious, here's the retro card reissue that I use for size comparisons. It's hard to tell on camera, but in person, the reds absolutely do not match. Next, we have the original release of the PlayStation version. This head's a snug fit, but an interesting look. The colors aren't a complete match, but close enough. Other way around, and I kind of like this one. With white being a stronger color choice in this figure, the eyes really pop. Next up, and here we have Retro Card. This head is the same mold as the Retro Ben Riley, but the paint job is a bit different. Most notably, Retro Card also comes with this alternate head. The eyes are narrower, which gives them a bit more of an intimidating feel. Other way around, and the red on this head is a bit too bright for this body. Zooming in, you can definitely see what I mean. I don't have a lot of hope for it, but here's the Amazing Friends box set. This actually actually looks better than I expected. Don't get me wrong, the head's definitely a bit small, but color-wise it balances out. Other way around, and again, the colors are good, but this head is way too big. And lastly, here we have Renew Your Vows. Stylistically, this is very similar to Pizza Spidey, but not exactly the same, and honestly, I think this one's a winner. Other way around, and even though I don't love this head, it doesn't look half bad. And if you're curious, here's what it looks like from the side. Renew Your Vows also comes with a Peter Parker head. If you've got an extra Peter Parker head laying around, a little bit of blonde paint would go a long way to turn this into Ben Riley. With nothing but a couple of energy effects, Chasm just keeps coming up short. And while I wouldn't say that Ben has the best accessories in the world, at least his are more useful. Between that and the head swap potential for playability, this round goes to Ben. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price. This is the second Spider-Man Marvel Legends wave this year, and both of them have been on blister cards. With fewer accessories and no build-a-figure, the profit margin for these waves are much higher. Combined with collector disapproval of windowless boxes, Boxes, as evidenced by them clogging up clearance aisles, as well as all the reuse, and it's easy to see why Hasbro went this route.
route. But between the reuse and limited accessories, these figures do come across a bit cheap. I know I've been a bit more critical of Chasm, so you probably think I hate this figure, but that's not true. I like the figure well enough, but if he was to end up on anybody's top 10 this year, that would be a... SHOCKER! For price, this round is a draw, but the battle goes to Ben, who swept the board 5-2. to two. Is Chasm a character or just an action figure that you're interested in? Sound off in the comments below. If you like this video, check out one of these. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice and have fun.